everyone. Yes, I am serious. Today we will be solving this polynomial equation right there. x to the 10 plus 2x to the 9 plus 3x to the 8 plus, I won't say all of this because it will take way too long, skip to the end, 3x squared plus 2x plus 1 is equal to 0. And yes, it is indeed a d6 polynomial, a degree 10 polynomial, but it is still solvable because otherwise why would I have made this video? So let's see how we can solve it. Well, it might be a good idea to factor this into things like linear terms and quadratics because then we can make use of the zero product property and solve for each linear term and quadratic term respectively. And here's how we are going to proceed. First, I would like to decompose all of the terms of this polynomial like this. So we'll have x to the 10th plus x to the 9th plus x to the 8th plus x to the 7th plus x to the 6th plus x to the 5th plus x to the 4th plus x cubed plus x squared plus x plus 1. And then the next, the next bit will be x to the 9th plus x to the 8th plus x to the 7th plus x to the 6th plus x to the 5th plus x to the 4th plus x cubed plus x squared plus x. So the x to the 10th and the 1 are as they are there and the 2x to the 9th like this and the 2x like this. And what comes next? You guessed it! x to the 8th plus x to the 7th plus x to the 6th And here's how we are going to do it. We'll factor these two terms together. Wait, I'll redo my A because it got a little bit erased. Like this. So these two will, fa will get factored together. These two, these two, these two. So these two will get factored together, just like these two. And finally, these two right here. Okay, so now, why did I do this? Well, each of the pair of terms I have circled is of, is of the form. Sorry, my, <laughs> my marker fell down. So as I was about to say, each of the pairs of terms we formed is of the form x to the n plus x to the n plus 1. Factoring out x to the n, we have x to the n times x plus 1, which means all of, for all of this, we have a common factor of x plus 1, which we can easily factor out. So we will have x plus 1 times, okay, let's see. So we'll have x to the 9th, x to the 7th, x to the 7th, x to the 5th, x cubed, uh, this is simply an x, x to the 8th, x to the 6th, x to the 4th, x squared. I hope you see what I'm doing there. Plus, let's see, x to the 4th, plus x squared, plus 1. That took the whole length of the board to write, but don't worry, we are going to simplify this in a second. What I would like to do is I would like to collect like terms on this expression. So we'll have x plus 1 times. Okay, we'll have x to the 9th is its own term. And then for the x to the 8th, we have 
1 x to the 8 x to the 7 oh we have a second x to the 7 there x to this 1 and 2 2 x to the 6 x to the 4 I mean, x to the 5th sorry 1 all the way at the end and now why is this useful well we can again factor terms pairwise so let me do this in green so we'll factor these terms together these terms together these these and finally these two and now and now let's factor um, let's factor the common factors. Well, that's basically the point of factoring, factoring common factors. Okay, so here we'll have x to the 8 times x plus 1. Here we'll have factoring out 2x to the 6. 2x to the 6 times x plus 1. Here we'll have 3x to the 4 times x plus 1. Here we'll have 2x squared times x plus 1. Like this, and here we simply have x plus one. And now we have a common factor of x plus one, which we can easily factor out. And this will combine with the with the x plus one we already have in the front. So we'll have let's see x plus one whole thing squared the times x to the eighth plus 2x to the 6th, plus 3x to the 4th, plus 2x squared, plus 1. Good. And now, next thing we want to do is to factor this. But how do we factor this? So let me make some space over there. Okay, so we have x to the 8th plus... 2x to the 6th plus 3x to the 4th plus 2x squared plus 1. Okay, and now we'll do pretty much the same thing as we did right there. We will break up this polynomial. So we'll have x to the 8th plus x to the 6th plus x to the 4th plus x squared plus 1 plus x to the 6th plus x to the 4th plus x squared plus x to the fourth. But then, we're going to do something a little bit different. Instead of factoring pairwise, like we did here and there, we'll factor in groups of three. Uh, 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 three, like this. Okay, so we'll have, uh, let me do this in blue. So we'll factor these together, these together, and the remaining last terms together good and now for our first pair factoring out an x to the fourth we have x to the fourth times x to the fourth plus x squared plus one plus x squared we factor out the x squared there times x to the fourth plus x squared plus one plus simply x to the fourth plus x squared plus 1. And I'll write the coefficient of 1 in the front. And here is 1. So we can see that we have a common factor of x to the 4th plus x squared plus 1, which we can write. So x to the 4th plus x squared plus 1. So we'll have x to the 4th plus x squared plus 1 times x to the 4th plus x squared plus 1, which is the same thing as x to the 4th plus x squared plus 1, whole thing squared. So we can substitute that in for this polynomial. So we'll have x plus 1 times x to the 4th plus x squared plus 1 squared. And remember that all of this is equal to 0. And now, as I said earlier, we can make use... Wait, I forgot the square here. As I was about to say, we can make use of the zero product property. So this leaves us with two cases. Either... This term is 0, which means 
x plus y is zero. Therefore, x, x plus one, <laughs> x plus one is equal to zero. Therefore, x is equal to minus one. That was pretty easy. And then, x to the fourth plus x squared plus one whole thing squared is equal to zero, which means x to the fourth plus x squared plus one must be equal to zero. And now, x to the fourth can be written as x squared squared. And here we have a quadratic polynomial in x squared, which means we can solve for x squared. So this will be negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 1 squared, which is 1, minus 4 times 1 times 1, which is 4. 1 minus 4 is negative 3. Square root of negative 3 is simply i times the square root of 3 where i is the imaginary unit and all of this divided by 2 times 1 which is 2 and now we can just take the square root on both sides leaving us with x is equal to plus or minus the square root of minus 1 plus or minus i square root of 3 over 2 okay so we have four solutions Expressed in terms of nested complex radicals with plus or minus signs. So let us break all of these solutions up apart. So we'll have x is equal to, if we take the positive version on both sides, we get square root of minus 1 plus i square root of 3 over 2. x is equal to minus this, so minus square root of minus 1 plus i square root of 3 over 2. And then the solution is x is equal to square root of, taking the negative range here, minus 1 minus i square root of 3 over 2. And finally, we'll have x is equal to minus square root of minus 1 minus i square root of 3, whole thing divided by 2. And now, we'll simplify each of these nested radicals. And to do that, I would like to take a look at the complex plane. So we'll have our complex plane like this. So this is our imaginary axis and our real axis. And now I would like to recall that every complex number z can be expressed as r times e to the i theta, where r is called the magnitude of z and theta is called the argument, uh, the principal argument of z, which ranges between 0 and 2 pi inclusively. So now, how can we make use of this to simplify all of this? Well, let's take a look at negative 1 plus i square root of 3 over 2. So we'll have, I'll divide everything by 2, so we'll have negative 1 half plus square root of 3 over 2 i. And now let us plot this thing onto the complex plane. So we'll have negative one half as our real part and square root of three over two as our imaginary part. So we'll have our part will be probably here. And now let us connect it to the origin and like this. So we know that this length is square root of three over two and this length is one half. Now, how can we find our magnitude, our r? Well, we can simply use the Pythagorean theorem or 36 to 94 triangle. And anyway, we'll have that this length is 1, which means the magnitude will be 1. So 1 times e to the i times what? Well, what is this angle right here? Well, we can use trig trigonometric ratios or see that this is a 30, 60, 90 right triangle which means this angle will be 60 degrees, or rather, pi over 3 radians. It's better to use radians here. And now, the angle it will make with the positive real axis, because theta is defined as such, will be 2 pi over 3. So we'll have 1 times e to the i 2 pi over 3. I will, I will erase the 1, since it, multiplying by 1 doesn't change anything. And now, we'll just take the square root on both sides, it will be left with e to the i pi over 3. But now, what is e to the i pi over 3? Well, 
I would like to take a look at a very famous identity called Euler's identity and namely what Euler's identity states is that e to the i theta is equal to cosine theta plus i sine theta. You can easily derive this using Taylor series expansions for the functions e to the x, cosine x, and sine x. And I'll just plug in pi over 3 into here, we get, so let's see, cosine of pi over 3 is a half, if I'm right, yes, I'm right. And then sine of pi over 3 is square root of 3 over 2, so square root of 3 over 2i. So that's, that's good progress. But what about negative 1 minus i square root of 3 all over 2? Well, we can use a similar procedure. So we'll have dividing through by 2 negative one half minus square root of three over two i and this is equal to what well let, let's see i will just erase this thing right here to make a little bit of space it's funny because when you erase it it makes some kind of weird quacking sound or something okay so negative one half as a real part and negative square root of three over two as our imaginary part which means our number lies somewhere here. No. Just connect it to the origin. Like this. And now this length will be one half. And this length will be square root of 3 over 2. And now what is the magnitude? Well, it is simply as before 1. The Pythagorean theorem or something. And then what is theta? Well, this angle is equal to a pi over 3. You can use trigonometric ratios or 30 60 90 triangles N never mind and now what and now we have an additional pi radians up here because we'll have pi and then pi over 3 which means pi plus pi over 3 is 4 pi over 3 so we'll have one one times e to the i for pi over 3 and then the one can go away because it doesn't do anything and just take the square root on both sides. So this will be equal to e to the i to pi over three. And then use Euler's identity, plug in to pi over three into here, we get negative one half plus square root of three over two i. And now we have denested all of these radicals, which means all that is left is really to apply plus or minus signs. And this basically gives us our solution. So let me make a box right there so I'll have our solutions will be x is equal to negative 1 right there and then x is equal to positive this thing so 1 half plus square root of 3 over 2i x is equal to negative this thing so negative 1 half minus square root of 3 over 2i Next solution is x is equal to positive this this square root, which is minus one half plus square root of three over two i. And then the final solution, negative of that, is one half minus square root of three over two i. Oof, that was quite the challenge. You can say it it's a little bit tedious, but well. Well, yeah, I I have no other words to describe it, so let's end the, the video there. So, this is your thing of anything you're watching, and there's a video that you want to see in the next video. Bye.